So this video is uh, going to be all about axing and setting yourself up and using an axe correctly. The first thing is chop and block, have it just slightly below hip height and you want to make sure it's big enough so you're comfortable in terms of having enough area to land on and stable. Three legs splayed out is okay, if you can get a whole log it's ideal, uh, you've just got more mass there. When we work with an axe we always work to one side of the block, we have our non-dominant leg forwards so if I'm working with my right hand my left leg's forwards, if I'm with my left hand my right leg's forwards. We always make sure the axe stays in the middle of the block. We don't want to be coming across the body and our body getting in the way. We put a slight bend in both knees. Our left hand, well, sorry, our non-dominant hand, the one that's holding the workpiece, comes across the body while the right hand, or in this case, my dominant hand, right hand, is always in line with my shoulder. I don't bring it across my body ever. From here, I want to take hold of the, the helv in its saddle, which is this section. I don't want to choke right up here. I'm going to hold it in the helv. And then I'm going to hold it as if I'm shaking hands with someone. Don't have your thumb on the back of the spine of the helve. You want to have it across the helve. From here, we want to lift the axe up and just drop it. We never want to aim an axe. An axe should be accurate simply through your body position. We always adjust the angle of the log rather than the angle of the axe. We don't want to be cutting like this. If we want to get an angle, we just increase or decrease the angle of the log. We then lower and raise the axe. And just when you're starting out, just literally pick up and drop the axe. Don't try and aim it, just see where it lands. See, you're basically, well, I'm basically hitting it every time within probably about a centimeter or so. I'm not aiming anything here. This is really important. And over time, the more you do this, the more you keep yourself fixed in this position, the better it's gonna become. When we use an axe, we don't use the wrist, or at least we don't use it very often. Most of the time it comes from the elbow, sometimes from the shoulder. If we're doing very fine detail work, a little bit of a, a wrist action it, it is helpful, but most of the time the wrist is braced. We don't grip the axe hard, we just grip it fairly lightly, and that's about all we need. And I just want to take a couple of minutes to uh, chat about axe safety. Whenever we use an axe, we never want to have our body in line with it. So as you can see in the video, I was always stepped to one side so that if the axe was to miss the chopping block, it would never land in my leg. It would always go on the outside of my body. And never place an axe on top of a chopping board. In fact, any cutting tool, never place it down without sheathing it, even if it's for 30 seconds. A small action of placing the sheath back on could then save you a trip to the hospital. It's all too easy just to accidentally brush the tools off and uh, then the dangers are obvious. Whenever we're using any cutting tool, make sure you have your first aid kit to hand. Make sure that it's got everything in there that you would need. And one of those things, most important things, is a tourniquet. Um, learn how to use it, practice using it. Teach the people around you that are gonna carve or either carve with you or at least be in your presence, your family, friends, etc. One day it could save your life and uh, it certainly shouldn't be underestimated. They are quite expensive, but it's worth investing in a quality known brand practicing and knowing how to use it. Lastly, with any cutting tool, but especially the axe, it needs to be sharp. If the axe is dull, you'll start to notice it wants to glance off the wood rather than biting in. That in itself leads to the axe being very uncontrollable, but you'll also get frustrated with it. You'll also try and force it to do things that it doesn't want to do. All of those scenarios are gonna increase the chances of you having an accident. I make and sell sharpening systems. You can check out the videos that I've got on my channel. You can send me emails if you want. I can uh, put my email up there. Drop me an email and I can give you a price list and information and uh, ensure that your tools are cutting how they should be. But I hope that video helps. I hope it answers some questions that you might have had. And if it hasn't and you have more questions, feel free just to drop them in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them. All right, catch your team.